be organized and you need to do your business plan. Like that's the takeaway for today is all of this in here is beautiful. We love our minds, but unless somebody else knows what's going on in here, you can't translate it, right? So you can't make money from it. You can't, like you need to be able to express yourself on paper of your vision for your business. And that's by making a business plan. So the takeaway is if you have an idea, if you're in the process, do it, write the business plan, and then you can apply for grants and everything else. Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Biz Grants. My name is Chris Batkawi, the host, and each and every day, I bring to you awesome guests to talk about their entrepreneurial journey, to learn from their experience, and ultimately to share some value to you, the viewers. Today, we are very privileged. It is going to be a jam-packed day and show because we have Ryan O'Neill Knight from Detailing Knights as well as ACBN joining us. And we have an award-winning person here with us today as well, Tara from Articulate Tees. Um, to be able to tell us about her story and her, gen her, her journey as well. So Tara and Ryan, welcome to you both. How are you doing today? Thank you. So good. Doing oh. well. Super excited. See Tara's glowing. Always good right. to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Likewise. Yes, I see that. So Ryan, tell us about the ACBN Legacy Symposium, which just took place recently. Um, how was that experience? What, what did viewers miss out if they were not there? Oh, man. I was pleasantly surprised how well the networking aspect of the symposium went off. Uh, the last two was in person, of course, the last one I shared in. And that was the main vibe is the positivity in the room and being able to talk to people and just meet new people and hear speakers. And then thanks to um, the platform that we're using, World Event Center, we were able to duplicate that in some way where after the presentations, yes, those are great, uh, awesome speakers, but then people just got to sit at tables together and just meet new people and bounce around to other tables. So we had that same feedback where, yes, I got to meet so many new people and I got to, uh, create like business partner it just it that I was scared that we weren't going to be able to duplicate and I think we were able to pull it off so I was really excited about that that's awesome Tara tell us about your experience as an attendee at the legacy symposium how was it for you and what did you learn I can definitely echo what Ryan said with the testimonials I was one of them as well I really was able to bounce around between tables and meet people that I wouldn't have able to have been in rooms with before. Um, specifically, I got to meet Charles, like a, key, a speaker, a keynote speaker, and that's what I do for a living. So just having those conversations and having that realism one-on-one -on -one was really a huge experience for me as a solo entrepreneur. Um, what I learned from it was stop being self-conscious and get out there. Like put all those fears behind you and just launch. Like, you know, I was able to put my fears aside and get questions asked that I would have been stuck in the chat, you know, um, not getting a response to. So that was really something that I learned from um, the symposium. Hey, that's awesome, Tara. Thank you so much for that. So tell us, what is your company all about and why did you get started? Okay, so my company is called Articulate Tea. I'm a keynote speaker, an entrepreneur, a human resource professional, and a training and development entrepreneur. So I know it sounds like a mouthful, but what it is, is I'm in human resources. I like training people. I like um, allowing people to transform their lives. But like, for example, tapping into opportunities like the symposium, um, going to webinars, going to courses that can help improve their lives and manifest their goals. So my business is I train people, I give webinars. I did one training on um, team conflict and conflict resolution with the Toronto District School Board and Next Steps Employment. I also did uh, my own webinar that's available on IGTV. It's called Self-Confidence for a Thriving You. And it just allows one to tap into their self-confidence, like what I was saying, and just explore possibilities that you thought you had fear of over and 
that is really what my business is about transforming people's lives. So I do that uh, once a month. I do my webinars for free right now. And I'm also hired to do speaking engagements. So that's really awesome. And so Ryan, um, Tara is the winner of the Legacy Symposium um, $1,000 grant. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about that um, grant that she won? and working from home. <laughs> oh, yes. Jess, can you close the door, please? Thank you. Um, yes. So I'm always excited when we're able to give away money. And this time, it was the most uh, climactic, uh, stress-inducing uh, giveaway because over the month, people were signing up and uh, joining to earn like a thousand dollar grant we were giving away. And so, but you had to be at the symposium in order to claim the prize. So I think we went through 10 draws. So we are drawing and it's a randomizer. And then on the 10th one, it was Tara and she was in the room able to claim a prize and we don't have the applause and horns that Charles has. But <laughs> But, and it's like, it was meant to be Tara because the way that I'm hoping it'll be able to just boost your business, um, you're doing great things, uh, great reviews from people just that got to meet you. So that's always awesome where you know somebody that's really serious about their business, wants to see it get to that next level, need different supports and a bit of cash always helps along the way. And for ACBN to play that role, and especially now we're shifting to our microloan program and we're about to be announcing some big partnerships and being able to amplify uh, getting more money into entrepreneurs' hands. But the grants are always a way to really show the support and say, hey, we believe in you. We want you to use this money for your business and whatever other support you need. And that's why we love partnering with Empowered for X because we can plug an entrepreneur into a vast array of supports. The ecosystem is getting so strong that money is just one piece of it. And now we can really support you in everything else so that you're not timid and feel like you can't get out there and try new things. So I'm super excited. Hey, no. And so, you know, for those of you that are looking, if you have not heard about the Afro-Caribbean Business Network before, we'll definitely put the chat, the link to the chat there, um, an organization that is built to support entrepreneurs of Caribbean heritage and African heritage to really build and grow their, their business in a sustainable way, really thinking about that legacy building, right? And so Tara, um, congratulations to you. And, you know, I, as Ryan said, um, you, you got started. And so one of the things that you, you shared earlier is, you know, we got to get over that fear. We got to step outside of our comfort zone. And I know in your own journey that you've experienced some challenges and setbacks before you got to this moment. So can you talk to us a little bit about where you came from and what were the motivations and encouragement to step into this uh, current state of being an entrepreneur and really looking at building a strong future? Yes. So thank you so much for asking me that question, because my passion lies with where I started from, and that was being homeless in 2013. I experienced a situation with a family member that involved the Toronto Police Service. Um, I was charged with four serious offenses, um, but at the time I was a government employee. So um, with that said, I applied for legal aid, didn't get approved because I was in a high paying job. So I had to learn the criminal system by myself, do everything alone. Um, fast forward to the end of the case, I beat all my charges without a lawyer. And I also got an apology with the Toronto Police Service. Um, they tried to stifle my name with the RCMP by not clearing my record. But I was like, that's not happening. So I proceeded forward, got all my records in time and cleared it with the M RCMP. So I'm a free woman. Um, it just goes to show empowerment, education. People can't hold you back. So being homeless from that situation, I saw a gap with being a single mom in the shelter. People didn't have the opportunity to go to classes. They didn't have somebody to watch their kid. They didn't have financial backings to help them with resources. And they felt like uh, alone. They felt you know, depleted, they felt depressed. And that was why I said, I have the ability to speak up. I see gaps and I speak up. I am a communicator. I am a person who's very resourceful. 
how can we exploit these resources to help each other and not in a selfish manner in a way that will help us empower our lives like empower for x you know empowering ourselves so that is the reason why it, my passion lies with my business is fusing my hardship going through the hardships crying you know having emptiness sometimes not believing in myself sometimes um, having self, you know, depreciating thoughts, like it wasn't productive in order for me to become an entrepreneur. So now fast forward to 2020, I went into the Rise Entrepreneurship Program, graduated with them, and I started my business. I had a business plan, like what Ryan said, get that business plan done. And I launched my business plan as a sole proprietor. And from since uh, April of 2020, I've been launching, doing uh, webinars, as I was saying, doing trainings, and just it's more around awareness for my business right now. So I'm just trying to get opportunities, speaking, just being more involved in the community and finding out like, what is there? Like, what is happening here? Hey, so, that, yeah. is, that is such a powerful story. And, you know, I, I love what you shared around empowering yourself to know you that reskilling right like you didn't know about the criminal law or any justice system in that way and being forced into a place where you know that you were in the right standing and you were willing to go to bat and fight for yourself Brian what are your thoughts about Tara's story and journey and we talk about it a lot where it's not just about obtaining the knowledge but putting it to action and a lot of times you're put in a position where the only thing you can do is act. But now you're like out there speaking and trying to support others. And so they're getting the knowledge, but how do we get them to act on it? And so they don't just complain all the time and they don't feel like they're stuck or they don't feel like there's no supports. You are like the embodiment of the support that they can plug into and you're coming from that exact same experience. And I've had my run-ins with the law and now using entrepreneurship as that tool that really has no barriers. Like, and I mean, there's a, a little bit, I had to borrow some money from my dad to start up. That $200 helped me. And that's what I feel ACBN and Empower for X, and now you Tara with Articulate T, when people come to you and say, hey, or even when you go to them, like it's given a uh, push and pull, but, um when a person engages with you and you hear about their story and they feel like they don't have options, you can pull out it from your back pocket, here's an option for you and yeah. I will take your hand and walk you through across the finish line and beyond. So that to me is the difference between stories of people that have conflict with the law and then go on a downward spiral and then people like you that have conflict with the law and go on an upward spiral. And then you're actually taking people up with you, which is amazing. And I've tried to do that myself with showing young uh, people coming out of detention that entrepreneurship is an option. So you don't have to waste time trying to beg for a job. You can create your own job. So it's really powerful what you've been through and what you've turned it into. I'm inspired. I wish I had more money to give you. I'm working on it. We will. I will fundraise and figure out how to invest in you, but... We want to see you win, and we are here to help any way that we can. Thank yeah. you so much, Ryan, and your story too, for sharing. Thank you so much. That really touched me, for real. Hey, it, and you know what? It is by sharing these stories. You know, you share your story. You just learn a little bit about Ryan's story. Those connectivities, building those relationships. Sometimes when we share stories, we are vulnerable, right? Like you were telling me that story is like, what? You know, and I was I was going through some emotions, you know, like, and we're here. But, you know, despite of where you may have come from or you started or things that may happen, you can change it. And your, your business talking about transformation, it is going through that that process of you know growth or strains and challenges to really come to a place where you start flourishing and guess what you know the reality is you could plan for all of the worst cases and you still wouldn't know covid would happen last year march listen you know people never in a hundreds of years i think the the black plague was 300 years ago or something like that but listen in the worst case, when we encounter those challenge, Tara, to what you said around, you know, just the, the commitment to see your name clear, 
your, your vision, you're moving in that way to build something great for yourself because you know that greatness is within you and for you to manifest that, that is powerful. So thank you again. Um, and, you know, I'm curious in terms of, you know, your entrepreneurial journey, you talked about, you know, how you got started, all of these things. Who is your ideal client? So for folks that are looking, um, you know, at us here today, who should be reaching out to you in terms of the types of problems that they're experiencing and the solution that you bring to them as when they work with you? Okay, so in the in that capacity, I'm mostly my customers are B to uh, B to B. So it's mostly I'm hired through like TDSB or Next Step Employment or things like that. But on a one-to-one -one coaching session, you'd be able to explore like your self-confidence, organization, like putting your words to action. That is something that I'm really big on. And also to personal finance. I was able to clear my personal debt and my credit scores like into the 750s. And the reason as a single mom, I'm doing that is because I'm sticking to a budget. I'm able to talk the talk and walk the walk. As Ryan said, putting your words into actions. And that's what I'm helping people with. So if you do decide to do a coaching session with me, you can always reach out to IG and send me a DM. You can send me a email through articulate-t at gmail.com. And you can always have a free 30 minutes to explore like what it is you're looking for and um, how you can get there through goals, smart goals. Okay, not just regular goals, smart goals. <laughs> yes, awesome. Yeah. And we will be sure to put that information in the chat um, that people can get connected to you that way as well, Tara. Um, Ryan, in terms of your entrepreneurial journey, we, we had you on a little while ago. I'm curious, um, what has been the biggest learning for you to date? Oh boy. I know there are so many. Choose one. <laughs> Choose one. <laughs> you know, um, we have a, a mentor, our elder, Errol Gibbs. And after I talk with him pretty often now, and he always says, don't run away from complexity. And that stuck with me because I realized, and it happens every time we do an event. And every time I have a wild, crazy idea, and the people around me initially are shell shocked. They're like, I don't think we can do that. That sounds like, and then it's like, I guess being a leader and calming fears and like, oh, somebody was saying how a leader creates certainty. So whatever is happening, a leader being able to create certainty with their team and lead them into that complexity. And I find that's where the growth is, being able to pull off the legacy symposium. We did over two days. We added a marketplace. We added a job fair. We, it had to be online, like super complex. But yet that was like more complex than the last time. The last time it was like, oh, we want to do it with shared college and we want... XYZ partners and everything, and we want to have different rooms with different speakers. Like initially, it sounds so complex, but when you move into, you see the results of being able to do something that you were fearing, and now the the execution of it makes you grow. So that to me is what I've learned. I know when you're in it, and Tara, you said it. When you're going through some things and you're crying and you're in that moment and you're not feeling and Chris Beth knows about my anxiety leading up to events. And if it was just me, I would just cancel everything and be like, yo, why am I doing this to my ulcer? It's like I was giving myself an ulcer by thinking of these crazy things. But then the team around you make sure it happens and things happening while you're working on one thing, other things are happening. So building that strong team and moving into more complex things. And then I'm curious what my mind is gonna create for the next symposium next year. Perhaps it'll be in multiple continents. <laughs> Actually, well, uh, Victor is in Ghana. So he was one of our speakers. And so technically it was on multiple continents, but um, yeah, like who knows what's next. And I know with the right team around me, the complexity is not the issue. It's now, how do you create the plan that everybody executes? And that to me is like the biggest challenge of an entrepreneur is stepping away from doing the work and into managing the business. And so when you're managing the business, you're really creating the tasks for everybody else to do and then making sure that they get done. So that transition from me cleaning cars and being out there and 
but you know, washing cars until now managing the team that goes out and gets it done has been the biggest learning curve for myself. Hey, thank you so much for sharing that, Ryan. And honestly, I can say I've seen some of your journey. And yes, I, I've been on that roller coaster with you. But, you know, saving grace, the team you talked about that, but definitely as the visionary CEO, founder, and Tara, you talked about being that solopreneur. Right now, you are the boss. You got to cast that vision. You are the manager. You got to oversee all of the tasks and make sure that everything's there. And you're also the technician, the person who's doing the work, right? And that is only sustainable for a point. I remember Ryan on his journey, we, you know, we were talking about social enterprise and he said, my main objective when I started my business was feeding myself and my family. So making sure that I got $150 a day. And then as realizing, as the potential to with the potential to grow, then being able to say, I could actually do something more and bigger, something for good as we expand, right? And so there is a transition as well. The encouragement here at E4X is to begin with that end in mind. You might have heard of Stephen Covey's book, um, Seven, what is it? Seven, I can't recall what it what, is. What, Habits of Highly Effective People? Yeah, Seven Habits hmm. of Highly Effective People. Thank you so much for that. But yes, in that book, he talks about beginning with the end in mind. So where are you building towards? And you attended that networking event. It is about stepping outside of your comfort zone, building those relationships. Um, but having that plan, you talked about a business plan. Far too often, we are seeing businesses without a business plan. Um, there's lots of money that's coming down the pipeline from grants that we're hearing about loans and opportunities at a nominal rate where people can tap into. But that preparation, it's all here, but not on paper, which is what people want to see. And the good thing about having a business plan, that could be translated into grants and other avenues. It can go into pitch deck, simplified versions to help you understand how to navigate this journey that you get to design as the, the designer of your faith, right, in that context. And so in terms of, you know, entrepreneurship as a whole, Tara, I'm just curious, are there, have there been any books or resources that have truly helped you along your way that you would recommend for other people to have a read or look into? Yes. So there's a book called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Bleep. F. And uh, I really like that book because it just tells you to tune out and really focus on how to be, as you said, productive, how to really tap into your inner thoughts and find your visions, your goals, your mission in life and your purpose. Sometimes when you're, you know, as you know, as Ryan said, the noise, like you get overwhelmed, the anxiety is there. People don't want to admit it though. So it dehumanizes you. But once you admit that you're feeling anxious or you're feeling these emotions, that's what the book explains. It makes you more authentic. And it tells people that you don't give a, you're just being yourself. <laughs> hey, yeah, I, so I, I recommend I, that book on your entrepreneurial journey because sometimes your vision people as you said what you're crazy like you know but you have to tune it out sometimes and just go with it hey i value that i i no, this is a no swearing show but we yeah. understood what you on this what you shared and if you want to find that that book go for it and it's so true you know i think being real with yourself and then sharing that emotion with others, you know, along your way. Um, last night I was tinkering away, trying to explore my, you know, web development skills, adding a page to my website. And I blanked out the whole website. Every single page was gone. I was freaking out. I was like, oh my goodness. Uh, I, what did I say to myself? Uh, this is why you don't go and, you know, dabble like this right go find they call it the sandbox experiment it or play in the sandbox before you go touch the real thing nevertheless i was on the phone ryan i'm like i messed up <laughs> i messaged somebody else i messed up so bad but this morning uh, i want to just shout out pepper brooks from pepper brooks media um she's on our team supporting us helping us with our web development stuff if you go to our website you would never know what happened last night. But I'm sharing that because as an entrepreneur, sometimes you're like, I gotta just do this thing now, right? Because everybody else on my team is sleeping. I need this done. <laughs> but understand that you have to be gracious with yourself in the process. I was like, 
mad, sad. And then I looked at the page I developed and I was like, this is actually not bad. <laughs> but, <laughs> nice. But uh, yes. And so Tara, thank you for sharing that book. Ryan, how about yourself? Any books, resources people should be mindful of at this stage as they're building their business? Well, the book that I've been picking away at is Scaling Up. I forget who it's by, but look up Scaling Up. Uh, it does, and I've been implementing the daily meetings, and that has been really beneficial. One, having a team to meet with that helps keep the busyness in my brain structured and focused. Uh, having our air, air table so all of our projects are there, what is needed in each one. And then, yeah, looking forward to the other components of the book. But hey, our, our other mentor, Jeff Whitlock, he had a uh, like he bought a box of them to give to his team members and he said hey come and grab one so i would really recommend that book yes yeah it is a great book and honestly that meeting with your team is so helpful i'm not always meeting with my team every day but it really does set the tone for the week it does set the tone for the day oftentimes as they're getting on their way in terms of doing the work and especially when your team is small like you're the person right now but think about when you have a company of 20 people it's impossible to you, your days will just be spent in meetings all the time right so it's really important at, in this beginning stages to set that company culture around this is who we are this is what we're about to accomplish we want you on board um, and getting their insights and perspective on how to to make it better as well right because you're looking for the right skill set along the way as you're building your team awesome and so i guess as we're about to to wrap up a little uh tara uh in terms of you know someone that's looking at you right now they've heard your story um you've shared some insights about your journey what is one tip or advice you would share with someone who is considering starting or someone that's already on their way i would say you need to be organized and you need to do your business plan like that's the takeaway for today is all of this in here is beautiful. We love our minds, but unless somebody else knows what's going on in here, you can't translate it, right? So you can't make money from it. You can't, like you need to be able to express yourself on paper of your vision for your business. And that's by making a business plan. So the takeaway is if you have an idea, if you're in the process, do it, write the business plan, and then you can apply for grants and everything else. Hey, that's awesome. And, you know, I oftentimes, visionaries, eh? we're, we're awesome <laughs> people. I would just say lots of ideas coming in and it's like, oh, I can go this way and then I can structure it this way. So the, the logical and the creative mind all is making magic, right? But I get Chris, but that sounds like you're building a bird nest. How does it actually happen? Or it sounds like a spider web. Everything's kind of like confuffled. <laughs> and so to your point, it's not until I started using tools like the business model canvas, a one pager that you could start putting. Okay, these are the people that we want to serve. This is the problem they have. This is how we're going to make money from it. This is how the team's going to flow and operate. It really helps to simplify the confusion or the complexity, which yes, it's great to have that complexity, but the question is how do we simplify that to achieve the goals, right? Because to be operating in a state of complexity is could be very chaotic as well, right? Um, but if you can simplify that process, it makes it way better. And so- well, And that's where the magic is, because when you put together a structured plan, the complexity that you thought was so insurmountable and how are we ever going to do that? And I know as an entrepreneur, your mind is always twisted up, but I read a book. Oh my gosh. What was it called? Something about like making plans, but it said your mind is a terrible note taker. So all of that stuff that's in your mind, you have to get it out onto paper to structure it. And then like Chris Bad said, put team members around it, delegate those tasks and then have those meetings to make sure, hey, did this get done? What do you need? Don't try and do everything yourself. So really stepping into, again, that business ownership role. And even as a startup, like for yourself, Tara, 
don't be afraid of bringing on that first support, whether it's an intern, a co-op student, a virtual assistant. I would always recommend bringing a virtual assistant. Uh, they're inexpensive. They can tackle one task. If you just need somebody to do research for you, that's a great place to start. So um, yeah, keeping that in mind that don't be afraid to bring on a team. And especially as you're starting out on your journey as well, if you, you did the right thing, you started, right? And oftentimes I tell people your vision could be so vast, but where do you start? So yes, I have a bird nest in here, but what's that first piece of that? Or oh, with a spider web, right? Where do you start? And once you get clarity about where you start, it's then you're stepping into this entrepreneurial space of what I like to call the four Ds. So you make a decision to start, great. You decide what you have to do. You decide what needs to be delegated and what needs to be dumped, or you could delay. Okay, so we could add a fifth one, right? So, hey, I, I love, I love these. <laughs> yes, so do, dump, delegate, delay, and decide, right? And so what does that process look like for you as you're building your business, right? And so that's where the team and additional support, and you could look at it in a hybrid way as well, um, you know, using subcontractors, collaborating with others to build out your company in that way. So Ryan, tips for you, um, from you in terms of someone that's, you know, let's talk about someone that's a little advanced. I know you've been running your business now for more than 10 years. What is some, what is an advice that you would like to share with someone on their journey? Uh, that raising money is not, you can't wing it. Um, two things. I, I think I talked a lot about like building the team and delegating and having that support around you, but now really injecting capital into your business and learning how to leverage both debt, equity. Grants are nice and fluffy and people always come to me and say, oh, I need to raise money, but I don't want loans. I want a grant. And it's because what they're using the money for clearly isn't going to amplify and create revenue. So you can't take on a loan without being able to increase the sales and then pay back that loan. So that I fear, I feel like is the fear that a lot of business owners have where they're not 100% confident in that business. And I'll tell you like white friends that I have, they're on offense. They do not see that barrier of, oh, I wonder if this won't work out or blah, blah, blah. Like all those things that are running in. And I'm just using myself an example in my mind. I'm thinking like, oh man, if I take on this 20K, how much is this, is my idea really that good? And you're just drifting in anxiety and talking yourself out of like growing your business. So really, I really talk to our community about shifting from defense to offense and saying, listen, we have 20,000 that we're able to loan to you and coach you in how to use that money to amplify your sales so that now you can pay back that money and get the next injection of capital. Empower Forex has an accelerator that helps you get investment ready to bring on investors and equity investment, angel investors and venture capitalists. Once you bring on other people's money, it's a different ball game. But for me, I feel like that's the only way to amplify what you're doing to go from like linear growth to exponential growth. So if you're serious about exponentially growing your business, you have to figure out how to inject capital. It's not good enough to just save your little bit of profits and then keep growing line linear, yes. So, and that's why people should be at the symposium. Don't show up if you're there not to grow your business. When you're ready to grow, you know where to find us, acbncanada.com. We are here to support and empower your business. Well, that was empoweredforx.com. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I, I, I'll give it away. You can share, you can use it, right? Um, but I, I, Ryan, that was so powerful. And honestly, um, you know, we've been business partners for a number of years now, and we, we have that shared vision in terms of, you know, looking at our entrepreneurial community, specifically Black founders that we work with primarily, and we see 
within our own self and I've shared my story a uh, 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 feeling of lack not good enough and you know then really realizing but I can and I can move into that truth of building something that is viable mm -hmm. the thing about grants and those type of funding opportunities they oftentimes limit it right and when you apply for those things they want to see the KPIs the key performance indicators they want to know what the metrics are they want to know what the impact is and so that's the important piece of having a business plan you're able to say we were getting this injection of capital this is going to be the return so when you're considering going after loans or additional debt in to help your business grow right this is good debt we're talking about businesses when you're in the ceo role you need to be thinking about how can i raise capital to continue to do the great work that we're doing if you're not in that mindset and vein you need to grow in that space right and so raising capital through different means is very important. And that's why here at Empowered Facts, yes, through our business accelerator, we understand that not everybody wants VC or wants to be, you know, getting investment through someone taking equity from a company, all of those things. But what we say, let's help you position yourself where you could be investable, right? Mm -hmm. And so investment readiness is so key, looking at the foundations of how you're starting your business, how especially in this digital economy, really where does technology support you to help you flourish? What we see also in the Black community is that a lot of us are in service-based economy. We're in the service econ industries. And as a result, where you see the injection of capital going, it's not in the service base. So we need to really step up and elevate our mindset about how do we digitize our services? How do we ho hold that space? We're already there, so let's make it our own. And that's the encouragement through the work that we do here at Empowered Facts. The accelerator for the next cohort is open. Um, if you go to our website, you'll see the, the application form there, sign up, have a conversation with us, and we'll tell you whether or not you're the right fit. And if you're not the right fit yet for that business accelerator, we have the boot camp, which is basically really helping you clarify your business idea, because that's what we're seeing as well. Oh, I want to do all of the thing, the shiny, the bird's nest, the shiny thing syndrome, but we help you to focus as well. So that's what we do here at Empowered Facts. We love working with entrepreneurs like yourself, Tara. I was once in that scene. I think I saw something on Gary V's um, website or social media recently. He had, everyone starts out with zero followers. He has millions today, but we all start in the same place, but it's the decisions that we make that puts us on a different trajectory. And so we're inviting people to join us on our entrepreneurial journey by coming on to this show, sharing their stories, sharing how they have been impacted um, to ultimately make a difference in the people that they're serving. So my final question to you both as we begin to wrap up the show um, is, what is something fun-epical? So Tara, you probably have never heard this word before, but fun and epic, things that you do in order to express self-love. And so, Ryan, let's start off with you. I know last time you shared spending time with your kids. Um, what is something that you do? I would say that is still the thing, being the big monster that attacks the children and destroys the town is my fun epical thing that I like to do. Um, yeah, other than that, I feel like I'm always answering emails. So it gets allows me to break out of my business mode and just be silly with the kids. So always enjoy that. Hey, that's awesome. I think Tara had some technical difficulties and had to hop off a little, but no, I, as she's trying to get back connected, um, you know, Ryan, I, I truly appreciate the work that you do over at ACBN. Um, and it's great, you know, I think um, being along on this journey with you as well to see you, the vision. We're going to do this thing online. We went on search for the right platform. As you said, it was about that convening of the entrepreneurs, the magic, right? Yes. Um, and so if you're looking for business support, definitely you want to, you know, tap into the ACBN ecosystem, Empowered Facts. We are here to help you as well. Um, Ryan, any parting words for folks as they, maybe looking, uh, considering uh, more about ACBN, if you want to talk about them a little. 
Yeah, uh, just really excited about the different partnerships that ACBN has been able to put together over the course of the last couple of years. Of course, Empowered for X, um, even SETC, the social economy through social inclusion, uh, the Black Chamber of Commerce, Carifica, First Fridays, Black Boys Code, uh, Cough P, which I'm a, uh, one of the board members of now, TCBN, who was a real great supporter right from the beginning. Uh, the beginning. <laughs> and uh, Alterna Savings, uh, new partners that have come on, like BDC, and uh, who was the other one? Uh, Alt I mean, Aviva. So different people or organizations being able to come together and really show what collaboration can do. That's the only way that these uh, symposiums have been able to happen. That's the way that we've been able to be fortunate to get certain grants and work with organizations like Rescue, Youth uh, International, and Roots Community Services. So many different partners that we all want to be able to curate what we're doing to amplify it. Black North initiatives happening, they're going national and doing great things. The Black Opportunity Fund is getting close to launching their initiatives and helping people get funding. This is where I feel ACBN plays that. Our puzzle piece is understanding how to support entrepreneurs, coach them to access all these different resources that are coming out. There's gonna be more coming up. The federal government announced their 221 million May. They should be accepting applications. They created a new organization, FACE, Federal Association, oh my gosh, the Federal African Canadian Economy. I think that might be wrong. Ask the BBPA. BBPA knows more about it than I do. So all these different things happening in our community, in our country that support us, we need to be on top of it. Do not miss any of these applications to send them in. Hey, that's so powerful. Hey, Tara. Uh, hey, Tara, I saw that you came back. Uh, for the last question, uh, so I don't know if you heard the explanation, but I asked what is something fun epical, so that's fun and epic you thing that you do to express self-love. Ooh, I use my self-care wheel. I Ooh. created a self-care wheel, and it has my financial, my social, um, like a whole different seven areas that I empower myself. So I encourage everyone to go on Google and create a self-care wheel. It's really empowering. You have different lines to fill in different aspirations that you'd like to achieve. So that's what I do. Hey, that's awesome. Thank you so much for that. And yeah, I think um, the self-care wheel. Yeah, I love it. I'm going to look into that a little. Um, one of the tools that we just developed here at Empowered Facts is the My Value Formula. We actually look at nine areas of your life that you should be taking care of yourself in. So I will definitely look at that, Tara. Thank you so much. Uh, to both of you, this show has been so powerful. Um, I want to just say, Tara, your story, you know, has been very impactful. It's great to see the momentum and the work that you're doing, not only just for your life, but I can see the legacy that you're going to be leaving as well. Um, ultimately, I want to say, Ryan, the work that you're doing with ACBN and your, your company, Detailing Nights, uh, you know, I'm in awe. And, but I want to just say thank you for the continued support, guidance, mentorship that you give to our community as a whole, because it is truly making a difference in the lives of people. Ryan said to me, can we give away $5,000? I said, no, that, like we have to be financially sustainable as well, right? So uh, sometimes I come in and I give them a little check and balance piece there. But um you know, we continue to do great. Yeah, speaking of which, so if there's any sponsors out there that want to support ACBN, we need more money to give away to these amazing entrepreneurs like Tara. There are many of them in our community that need the support. So that'd be a great way to get your name out in the community as a supporter and being able to support Black entrepreneurship in a powerful way. I will leave that with you. Okay, awesome. So Tara, finally, let people know how they can find you um, if they're looking for support in order to, you know, just connect with you, to work with you. How can people find you? They can find me at articulate-t at gmail.com online. They can go on Instagram at articulate-t. I have a Facebook page, articulate-t, Pinterest, articulate-t, Wix spaces, articulate-t, all handles are articulate-t. 
So feel free, message me anytime and I always respond within a day. Awesome. We will definitely put that information in the chat. And Ryan, for our viewers, can you tell them how they can find, get in connection with you and or ACBN? Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, best way is the website, acbncanada.com, being able to fill out our business assess our business needs assessment form that triggers a discovery call with one of our coaches and then we'll see what support you need and plug you into the right ones whether it's marketing sales accounting legal uh funding is the big one we are able to plug you into the right supports awesome so thank you so much to you both from our team here at empowered facts we're sending you lots of love today um my hope and you know send off is that you continue to make a positive difference we're here to support you in any way that you like reach out we and i'm not gonna lie we do not have all the answers but one commitment that we do have here is that we will go out and find those answers or the right people to get connected with connect you with so tara thank you ryan thank you we are going to have our next set of guests for today and we'll see you all soon take care